Welcome to the second video, 102, using the job editor part one. Here we're going to talk about uh, how we are using the job editor to visualize our data sets and to get an overview as to what's going on with the, with the job. You saw me during the uh, first video, you saw me use the delete function, and I'm actually going to use that here first as a demonstration, um, because the job that I ha still have in over here is not the one that I want to work with. So I'm just to, I could of course start a new job, but I need to demonstrate the job editor. So here you go. If I want to delete, delete a layer, I can say layers delete and I can click on one. It will ask me for confirmation. It will show you the file name and you can click on okay. And that will take one layer out. Uh, of course, if you have multiple layers that you want to go for, um, that would be a little tedious. So you can also use the multi-delete function and you will notice when that one comes up that it says delete active or non-active layers. So what does it really mean, active and non-active? Well, you notice that in front of the file names over here, in front of the lines uh, and also at the top for the drill layer, that there's a box and at this point it's solid. That box is actually the active, the status, the active uh, activation status. So if I have this show like this, like an open box, it means this layer is not active. It's non-active. It whatever we do, it will not be affected if it is solid. If I have manipulations that I want to do, it, it will work on that layer. So you have the choice to delete the active or the non-active. It all depends on, you know, what is easier. Uh, like if I do it, let's do it in two stages for now. Uh, in this case, I want to delete the non-active ones. Well, then it's just easier to switch back and say apply. And I'm just going to finish up and say, okay, all of these need to go uh, active like that. Let's just bring in a, the data set that I really want to work with. So I'm going to go and pick up my training two. Actually, I want to go and pick up my training one. There we go. That's the job that I want to work with. Okay, so I, what we're doing here, you see a number of boxes down here. These are, we refer to those as planes rather than by the color that you see. The reason why we do that is that you can set up your own colors and the video 301 that uh, shows you how to customize the UCAM, UCAMX look will also tell you uh, how to change your colors. So plane one, if I click on this layer over here and I put it in plane one, in this case, my color red, plane one, this is actually the active added layer. And it's also from this layer that when you click on it, when you put a layer in plane one, it will show you the aperture list for that layer. When I put a, a job in plane two, you will notice that the aperture manager is empty because there's no layer in plane one so we have plane one we have plane two if i take it for example for like this uh, this is my top layer this is my top mask if i zoom in for a moment and there's plenty of zooms which we will return to in one of the future videos if i zoom in here you see that these two colors are mixing it also does this with the color the with uh, plane three, which is in this case our drill file. So we see nicely that our mask is bigger than our component layer and that our drill is smaller. Visually, it uh, gives a good indication as to how the job is constructed. We have a number of other colors here. Number four is I'm going to use this on the silk screen. And you will notice that the silk screen, the number four color is going underneath the colors that I have already on the screen. Uh, if I would switch it <clears throat> to plane number five, that color is now going over. It's not mixing, but it's going over the other layers that we have. The same principle uh, with these other colors that we have over here, you can put multiple layers in a color. All of these other, the seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, they will all not mix and they will jump underneath the, the other colors. Why do we have all these colors? 
Well, it's basically only the first three that we really use for functionality. As I said, the plain one is always the uh, main edit and the second and third are used for reference purposes. And we will come back to that in future videos. For now, if I don't want to see uh, M M1, I can do it once, I can click here on the height, which is the zero, plain zero, click here, and my, M my M1 will disappear. If I um, have a number of layers that are present that I don't want to see any of them, rather than clicking a number of times, there's a shortcut and we can say, okay, I hide all of them. Now, even though they're hidden, these layers are still active. Again, I could click on them to hide them individually, or I can click quickly on deactivate all. Now, what if I want to visualize all of the layers at the same time? Do I really need to click and click, pick a color, click, 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 click? No, we don't. You, you can just click on here on the little rainbow at the end. And, and what that does for us, it puts every layer in a color non-specific it just takes random colors puts them all in there and the reason why we do that is that for example on a total view like we have over here in a future video we will show you how to use the selections to remove these things on the outside and it's uh, quite handy to visualize these things before you uh, remove them so let's hide all of them again I also, we have a special, for the plane one, we have a special mode of uh, showing things, which is activated by the button right below it. And if I click that button, you will notice that the flashes and the draws, or the paths and traces, whatever terminology you're com comfortable with, they are showing in a different color. And the reason why we implemented that is that so you can very quickly see if maybe some of the paths, like these SMD paths, that they are drawn rather than flashed. And again, one of the future videos will show you how we can convert these and make these into real paths. For now, just know that you can toggle this view mode on. And when you do that, the icon also changes. You have like a, like a the secondary color is shown on the plain one as well. The colors that are being used, just like the main ones, you can also change the mix one. That's part of the 301 customizing video. For the job editor, uh, one other thing that we need to know about UCAMX is that UCAMX not only works on, performs functions on active layers, but it also performs functions on selections. So, since we are allowing you to work on layers that are not visible, we want to give you a visual indication that, you know, hey, be aware um, that you will potentially do something on a layer that you're not seeing. And I'm going to simulate that by making a selection. We're coming back to selections again, part of another video. I'm taking a selection on this layer over here. And now I'm going to go and activate my layer number four. Whether it's visible or not, it doesn't really matter. But you will notice that my plane one layer is has a red activation box, where my layer four has a yellow activation box. What that means is that you, you can just, at a glance, you can see that if I would do a function like, for example, delete, at this point, it would only affect the selections on layer one. Like just to simulate, I'm going to go to edit, delete, and do this. You know, see, it deleted only things on the plane one layer. As soon as I did that, though, you notice that the activation switched. Uh, both layers are now red because, in, indeed, if I would now do a delete, both layers would be gone. Luckily, we have a undo function under added undo with the shortcut F5, and we can just bring it back to where we were. That concludes part one of the job editor.